Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating 53 years in music and performing arts. The legend. <laughs> oh my God, Sergio Mendes, I don't believe it. And you said he sounded very Brazilian. <laughs> you were like, how does he sound? I'm like, very Brazilian. <laughs> I don't know. He sounds great. He sounds ready. This is ready. awesome. This is awesome. I'm, we're both nervous. I am. How do we talk to these people? They're legends. <laughs> We do it for you guys. <laughs> you, we can feel your support. You're holding us up. They're not. <laughs> I'm still nervous. I mean, I feel their support, but I'm still nervous. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and give him a call. Hello? Hi, is this Sergio? Yes. All right, well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so honored to welcome our next guest to the show. He is a Grammy winner and Academy Award nominee and the legendary Sergio Mendez. We're so excited to have you. Welcome to the show with Terry and Tiffany. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Man, Sergio, if you only knew all the years I spent listening to your records growing up, and I can't believe I'm talking to you like 53 years later. Wow. Yay, here we are. I hardly, Wonderful. I can hardly get out of bed in the morning. You're still cooking like some young guy. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's start off, Sergio. Of course, we want to talk about your long, illustrious career, but I wanted to kick off the interview by talking about your new album, Magic, and uh, what can fans of yours what are they in store for with this new album well this has been a wonderful experience for me working on this record for the last year i went to brazil i went to bahia to rio de janeiro here in los angeles and i i, I would describe this album as the magic of the encounters you know to for, to be able to uh, work with people like Carlinhos Brown and John Legend and, you know, so many different, Milton Nascimento mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, Janelle Monet. I mean, that's the magic of the encounter, which has been a, a lot like my life, you know, mm -hmm. coming from Brazil and uh, playing at Carnegie Hall when I was 21 years old and meeting Cannonball Adderley and then recording with him and many other people. For me, this has very been a very magical uh, experience, a magical journey. You know, that's I, why I call this album magic. I think that's when you really know. And I know you're a very humble man, but I'll say it for you: you really know you're a legend when you can do something like an album like this, to where you can uh, basically collaborate with people like John Legend and so on, who's big stars in their own right today. And it's kind of like the old father of, of, of music from way back is now with the younger guys. You guys are doing it together uh, in a song. It's great. Yeah, but it's for, for me, it's, uh, the energy is so beautiful. You know, the, the collaboration process was working with, like, Will I Am and, and John Legend again and Milton Nascimento and Carlinhos Brown. It's such a great energy, you know, that, that collaborative process to, you know, writing a song and and bring you something fresh and new and unique, and that's what really turns me on. Well, let me ask you, what was it like kind of on, on your first encounter into the studio with people like John Legend and Will I Am? Because I, I had read in interviews uh, with the Black Eyed Peas who collaborated with you years ago that they were just so much in awe of you. So what was it like going into studio with people like John Legend? It, it's amazing because, you know, when I met... Uh, it's uh, 10 years ago, uh, 2004, mm -hmm. I met Will I Am. He came to my house, and, and he told me he grew up in, you know, in L.A., listened to my music, and, mm -hmm. you know, I was so, you know, I was like, wow, I couldn't believe that, you know. And he asked me to play on his album uh, with the Black Eyed Peas, L.A. Funk, and then I said, let's do something together. Mm -hmm. Then we did the album called Timeless, and he brought in, you know... Uh, 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 he brought uh, Jesse Timberlake and he introduced me to John Legend then and uh, and uh, Erica Badu and so many other young young artists that love Brazilian music and uh, for me it was a learning experience because I'm very curious I love to work with younger people and uh, it's, it's, it's just a great thing you know it's like so when I saw Will the beginning of this year and I said man it's been 10 years <laughs> since we did the timeless you know right. they said what 10 years so yeah <laughs> 10 years went by 
but still the same amazing emotion of getting together and creating something together. Same thing with John Legend when I when I wrote the melody it was a Scott Mayo, uh, a guy that plays a saxophone in my band, mm -hmm. and my wife said, "Why don't you send this song to John Legend?" And we did send him an MP3, and he five minutes later he said, "I love this melody. I want to write lyrics. I want to sing." So that's the magic of the encounter I'm talking about. You know, everybody has their own sound, and you certainly have the sound of Brazil, and John Legend has his sound, and Black Eyed Peas have their sound. When you do something together with somebody, and knowing they have to keep a little bit of themselves, how do, you blend, how do you blend the two? I mean, you've done it so well. How do you get that chemistry, and how do you blend the two styles? Well, I think, first of all, it's a mutual admiration, you know? I mean, we come from different backgrounds, uh, culturally speaking, and of course, uh, age speaking, you know, with different generations, but what brings us together is the music. I mean, they have a, a love for Brazilian music. I love their sound and, and their, you know, like uh, John Legend's voice. So when I wrote the song, of course, it sounds like a, you know, it's, it's a very Brazilian, mm -hmm. but at the same time, as a great musician that he is, he can bring himself into to sing something that, you know, I mean, when you hear uh, for instance, uh, My Sharia Moore or uh, the Stevie Wonder stuff that sounds like Bossa Nova. Mm -hmm. Stevie loves Bossa Nova, and I know that. And Brazilian music. So that's the universe I'm talking about. Right. The universe of music, you know. It's about, it's about melody. For me, on the end of the day, it's a great melody, great lyrics, and a wonderful arrangement. And that's what brings us together. Well, you know, you, you've been around so long, and, and once again, I, I don't even use the word legend loosely. I mean, it is true, and that is you. And it's almost like it's all new for you again. You've had so much good success lately, even though you had success before, in the fact that a couple of years ago, you received an Academy Award nomination for a song. For, for the song for Rio. Yes, that was another incredible experience for me. Because working, I met, uh, his name is Carlos Saldana. Mm -hmm. He's uh, 43 years old from Rio de Janeiro. And when we did the Rio 1, then we did Rio 2 again. But uh, it's been already six years since we started. And for me, it was a totally different, because, it, you know, when you write music for a movie, mm -hmm. it's different than writing music for your own record. Sure. The different, you write for the, for the story. You know, you write for... There's a theme there. The theme was Rio. The first one was Carnival in Rio, and then the birds they go to the Amazon. But the interesting thing, the challenge is you have to you have to perform for the for the story. That's what guides you through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was such an incredible experience. Work was a uh, there's a there's a there's a man named John Powell. Mm -hmm. He's the orchestrator. He's an amazing. He did all the Ice Age movies, the uh, the uh, the Born Experience, and all that. So uh, for me, it was a different universe, which I never done before. Right. And I was so so happy to, you know, I mean, of course, to so honored to be nominated for an Oscar. It well, was a wonderful experience. I, I have to ask you, Sergio, just going back, uh, kind of to the beginning of your career. And I don't know if a lot of fans of yours know this, but. You had originally attended a conservatory and was training to be a classical pianist. And so what kind of led you, and, and thank God it you were led, to kind of get into the bossa nova sound and the Brazilian jazz because you really infused that, I think, in American culture when you came over here. Thank you. Well, you know what turned my mind around was when I first heard a jazz record. I was like 13 years old in Brazil. And it was the Dave Brubeck record, Take Five, mm -hmm. and I heard that and the piano and the and the, you know the whole. I never heard you know a jazz record in my life before, so that's uh, wow, that's beautiful because I was coming from classical music, which I I adore, I love. That's the music, you know, and 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 playing Debussy and Ravel and Chopin and Beethoven. All of a sudden, I hear that magical piano. It was Dave Brubeck, and then other jazz records was Oscar Peterson and Art Tatum and Bud Powell, Thelonious Monk, Horace Silver. So I, I, I fell in love with that language. And uh, we started playing uh, you know, kind of a Brazilian jazz. And then Bossa Nova started with Jobim 
and João Gilberto, and I was playing nightclubs in Rio de Janeiro. So that whole that whole thing was the jazz, the classical, Brazilian music, and uh, so I, that was my my upbringing. Well, I, I think it was a good time when you came out. I, I worry today that that today's youth. Is, and that's why it's so great that you're, you're teaming up with some of these, these newer kids. I call them kids. I'm old, too. <laughs> kids like John Legend. Be, because I worry that, that they don't hear enough of other great types of music. They're just hearing rap or whatever. Back in the 60s, we seemed to be at a time to where we were yeah. more open to different types of cultures and music. Yeah, absolutely. And, and melody. I would, I would say, like, right now, you know, I, I, we, I, I wish we would be more... I mean... I, when I hear Cole Porter and Gershwin mm-hmm. and Joe Beam and Irving Berlin and Harry Mancini and Stevie Wonder, I mean the melodies, the people that write melodies, man, that you fall in love with it, you know. Now, you know, it's a different world, you know, radio is playing some different things and uh, so it's a different world, but on the end of the day, melody for me is the most important thing. I, th- I think it's you guys' it's time again. It's like you're being reborn because I noticed it wasn't too long ago your old buddy Herb Albert had a hit too yes. again. So it's, your, yes. it's really your time sure. again. Wow. So how did you uh, wind up meeting Herb? I mean, he got you on A&M Records and it kind of was all That's involved right. around the song. That was came. my beginning. I was I was like auditioning here in L.A., which I'm talking to you from right mm-hmm. now. Uh-huh. And uh, and uh, this was now 65. And... Uh, we were auditioning to uh, record companies, and uh, so many record companies came to hear my band. And so one day, uh, Herb and Jerry Moss, A and M, they they walk in and they heard the band and they love the sound, and they invite me to join them at A and M. And we were just starting. Also, it was the Tijuana Brass. That was a that was an incredible beginning for me. You know, being here and to record for a new company and. Mm-hmm was music real music people yeah that was an amazing experience wow when, when things finally hit for you okay I, i'm sure that you're just as known over in your home country as, as you are here in the united states what did the people of brazil think i mean did they really think it was great that you were so popular in the united states or yeah i mean Mashkinada, I rec- you know i heard that song in brazil in 1963 i recorded here became a huge success in Brazil as well, we went to Brazil many times, and then again the song with the Black Eyed Peas in 2006. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a, it's great. I mean to to have a song like Mashkinada, which is the first time that a song in Portuguese became a hit all over the world. Now I'm I've got to ask you, okay, uh, only speaking English. What does that song mean? <laughs> I mean, what are the lyrics? What, is, what does it mean? You know, it's one of those magical songs. There's not a, not it's not about the meaning. I mean, the lyrics are more of uh, sounds, you know, oba oba oba, waria yo. You know, it's kind of a Afro-Brazilian sounds, mm-hmm. but the melody is so seductive and so. I mean, you know, it's like the became the national anthem of Brazil. Yeah. You know, I played that song in in Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia, everywhere still. And people start singing that thing together with my band on stage, and it's such a such a magical thing. It's just one of those infectious melodies. Well, you are, are so lucky to be married to who you're married to, because right. she, she sings like an angel, Sergio, let me tell you. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be hearing her on these recordings, and, and you just got like a regular family. I guess you have, oh, we well, have like absolutely. a 10-piece Thank band. Thank you. And I sing as her name. Ah, there you that go. Thing, yeah, yes. Yeah, and and your band which consists, mean, which means little grace in Portuguese. Oh, perfect, beautiful. perfect. So yes. the, the the actual setup on stage now is ten of you, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We're gonna right now. We're gonna play here in L.A. next week in the Cerritos Performing Arts Center. Then we're gonna do a concert in uh, in uh, Spokane, Washington, with the Symphony Orchestra. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to uh, Thailand and the Philippines and Japan. Wow. Absolutely perfect. All yeah. over the place. Now, I have to ask you about one of the things that, that I, I know about you that I think has got to be one of the biggest honors. And that is one of your albums is actually inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. 
And that was your album, Herb Alpert Presents Sergio Mendes in the Brazil 66, right? Right, yeah. So what was it like when they contacted you and, and bestowed this honor upon, upon you? I mean, it was joining things like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream wow. speech. Mm-hmm. Incredible wow. emotion for me. Amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm lucky. And I'm happy to be doing what I do. And uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful... I mean, I felt so humble when I heard that, and uh, great, great. Well, let me let me ask you this one last question here. We'll let you go because I, I know you're a busy man. I'm so honored to be talking to you. Back in the day, uh, I, I heard that the the forming with the girls uh, that became Brazil '66 was pretty much the idea of a studio, if I'm correct. Did you ever worry at any time? That with them kind of up front, you on the piano, that people would think, oh, it's a girl group, and it really wasn't because the core of the sound was you. Well, was it, was you know, I, before Brazil, I had so many different uh, groups in Brazil. I had three. I started with the Sergio Mendes Trio, mm-hmm. and then I had the, the I had a group called the Bossa Rio Sextet, and we came to the first time I came to the United States in 1962, Carnegie Hall. We played for the Bossa Nova. Uh, big boss on our concert was Stan Getz and Dizzy Gillespie. That's when I did my albums, kind of both. So that was I, I mean, had a lot of instrumental bands right. before. I really never. I, I mean, I accompanied singers before, but so when I got here, I said, you know, I'd love to because the the human voice is such a, a beautiful instrument. Mm-hmm. And when you when you when you have a great melody, but you also have a great lyrics. There's nothing better than that. So that's when I start using uh, the girls' voices. And I love that some I still do. I have in my band right now, my wife and two other girls. And uh, it's, just, it's just a great sound. And you know, the sound really, to me, sounds pretty much the same. I mean, you're one artist, and, and I give credit to you for that. There's so many artists, and I'm not going to name names, but there's so many artists now, you see them in person, or you hear them now, they don't sound the same. You still have everything you had. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And to know the things you've done, like like actually performing at the Academy Awards in 1968, and That's uh, right. I understand you got to perform in front of uh, Paul McCartney. Yes, yeah, so I had the, the honor to do that. We played. I think it was about two or three years ago. We we played uh, "Fool on the Hill" for him. <laughs> <'Cause> you, <laughs> wow! And he sent me a letter uh, written by written by him, you know, saying that that's his favorite version of the song. And just again, how about that? How about that melody? You know, it's just unbelievable. Well, I'm not going to ask you if you ever get nervous because if you can sing that in front of Paul, <laughs> <laughs> I would have passed that. Sir Paul, it is such an honor talking to you, Sergio. I mean, thank God you. It. So what a pleasure. Yes, Absolutely. thank you so much. Enjoy the new album. Absolutely, and I, the album is out now. It is called Magic, and uh, I'm assuming everybody can get it through the normal methods, iTunes, and all that kind of good stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, wh- where can people get your new album? I'm assuming it's through iTunes, Amazon. They yes, can- yes, yes. And and the and the last few record places you can buy a record in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In the United States, like Amoeba. Yeah, of course, to the internet, Amazon internet. Yes. And uh, of course, we want to encourage all of our listeners to make sure to check out your website. It's at SergioMendezMusic.com. And of course, if you're on the West Coast, uh, the next uh, tour date is October 24th. Sergio is going to be performing at the Cerrito Center for the Performing Arts in Cerritos, California. Yes. Sergio, it is such an honor to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here. My great pleasure. Thank you. Know, you. Uh, thank you so much. I, I hope you're happy because now is the time in your life and you can just sit back and breathe in all the accolades. I mean, <laughs> I, it, it's got to be amazing being you to sit back and think, I did all that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, Sergio. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, thank you.